In this video, I will be going over the utility maximization problem for perfect complements. Specifically, I will be going over a graphical interpretation of a solution to this problem, and then I'll go over the analytical solution, in which case I will be solving for the demand functions of two goods. First, I'm going to cover the utility function and the budget constraint. So the utility function here has the form of a Leontief utility function. And here I'm dealing with two goods, good one and good two. And this function takes the minimum of x1 over a and x2 over b, where a and b are parameters that can be interpreted as follows. So the consumer likes to consume a units of good one for every b units of good two. Up next is the budget constraint, which just states that total expenditure on both goods one and two must be less than or equal to a consumer's wealth or income level, which was represented by W. And you can also see here that expenditure on both goods is just the price of good one times the quantity of good one plus the price of good two times the quantity of good two. The last thing I want to touch on before jumping into the graphical solution to this problem is that with this utility function, more is better, so long as we're increasing the quantity of both goods. So to illustrate that, let's go ahead and evaluate the utility function at, let's say, the bundle A, B. So I'm just picking that bundle for the sake of convenience. So Evaluating the utility function at that bundle gives you the minimum between A over A, B over B, which the A's and B's cancel, so we get the minimum between 1 and 1, and that's just equal to 1. Now let's say I were to double the quantity of A and B simultaneously. Well, if you do that, your utility function can be evaluated as follows. So 2a and 2b, taking the minimum here of 2a over a, 2b over b, gives us the minimum between 2 and 2, which is just 2. So in this case, doubling the quantity of both goods yields double the utility. Hence, more is better. So why is that important? Well, if we look at the budget constraint, we see that we'll actually be spending all of our income if we're trying to maximize utility, right? Because we can keep increasing the quantity of both goods as much as we'd like to continue increasing utility, and we'll be able to do that until we've spent all of our income. So that tells us that the solution here must be such that all of our income is spent. And so the budget constraint holds with equality. With that in mind, now let's go ahead and find the graphical solution to this problem. So the budget line is going to look something like that. And now I'm going to draw two arbitrary indifference curves. Let's say this one right here and this one right here. So let's start with the one above and to the right first. So we can't have a solution on this indifference curve because it's not within our budget set, right? So our budget set is represented by the budget line and everything below and to the left. So nothing on this indifference curve is affordable, therefore a solution to the utility maximization problem can't be on this indifference curve. And using that logic, the indifference curve that contains the solution must be below and to the left. So now let's look at the other indifference curve here that I've drawn. Specifically, we can see here that, well, we do actually have some bundles here that are affordable. However, as I mentioned before, with our solution, since this utility function exhibit, exhibits the characteristic that more is better, we must spend all of our income at a solution. And there are only two points that are actually on the budget line, which correspond to spending all of your income. Let's call those A and B. So our A and B solutions to this problem, 
Well, we can see that actually if we compare them to that kink right there, which I'll call point C, we can actually obtain the same level of utility at point C as we do points A and B, right? Because with indifference curves, they show the set of all bundles that give the same level of utility, right? So we can do just as good as points A and B from a utility perspective by spending less and choosing point C. However, point C is strictly within our budget set. We could spend a little bit more on both goods and actually increase our utility. So that tells us that our solution must be above and to the right of this indifference curve. So by combining these two perspectives here, we'll actually come to the realization that our solution must be on the indifference curve that has a kink that just touches the budget line. And again, we can see that we can't do any better by choosing an indifference curve above this one because any bundle on such an indifference curve would not be affordable. And it can't be on an indifference curve below and to the left using the reasoning that I used with the bottom indifference curve, right? And we can also see that it can't be a bundle other than this one on this particular indifference curve because none of those are affordable, right? So this is indeed the bundle corresponding to the solution of the utility maximization problem. So how can we actually translate this solution to a system of equations that we can then use to solve for the demand functions of good one and good two? Well, if you remember from part one of this series, I showed you that all of the kinks of these indifference curves can actually be connected by one line, which starts from the origin. And you can actually recover this line by just setting the two components of this minimum operator equal to each other. So x1 over a equal to x2 over b. And to solve for the function that actually gives you this straight line, just solve for x2 as a function of x1. So that is just x2 is equal to b over a x1. So this line just has a slope b over a. So now we actually have a system of equations that we can use to solve for the bundle x1 and x2. The first equation is this guy right here. And the second equation is just the budget constraint, which holds with equality. And again, if you look at it graphically, that's just describing the intersection of the budget line with this line that passes through all the kinks. And that gives us the bundle represented by this point. Now I'd like to describe the analytical solution to this utility maximization problem. So there are going to be two equations and two unknowns. The two unknowns are the demand for good one, x1, and the demand for good two, x2. The two equations are also presented here. So the first equation corresponds to the line starting from the origin that passes through all the kinks of the indifference curves. And the second equation is just the budget line. So using the substitution method, I can go ahead and plug in the first equation into the second equation for x2 and then I can solve for x1 which is going to be a function of prices and wealth. So let's go ahead and start off by substituting equation 1 into equation 2 and we get p1x1 plus p2 times b over a x1 equals w. Now factor out the x1 on the left hand side and we get p1 plus b over a times p2 times x1 equals w. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out 1 over a on the left hand side. This is going to give us a nice clean solution. So 1 over a times a times p1, so I'm multiplying the p1 by a because a times 1 over a just gives us 1. So plus 
b times p2 times x1 is equal to w. Now multiply each side by a and divide each side by the term in parentheses and that will give you the demand function for good one. So x1 is equal to a w divided by a p1 plus b p2. So that's the demand function for good one. If we want to get the demand function for good two, we can just plug in this demand function for good one into the first equation on the right hand side and that'll give us the demand function for good two. So x2 is equal to b over a times aw divided by ap1 plus bp2. The a's are going to cancel and that leaves us with bw divided by ap1 plus bp2. So the solution can be expressed as two demand functions which are presented here in this red box. So first we have the demand function for good one which is what we solve for here on the bottom left. So this demand function for good one is a function of the prices so p1 and p2 and also of the income level of the consumer. And the demand function for good two is also a function of the two prices and the income of the consumer. So if I were to actually give you numbers for these prices and a number for that income level, you would simply plug those into these functions and that would give you the quantity demanded for goods one and good two. And those would be consistent with maximizing utility subject to the budget constraint.